Hi, everyone. February 10, 2019. I am hearing more and more people refer to the United States as a communist nation. I'm hearing East German Stasi a lot, and I'm also hearing this term, Zerzitzung. What is that, Zerzitzung? Psychological warfare techniques used by the Stasi to repress dissidents, political opponents, anyone against the government in East Germany during the 70s and 80s. Uh, they were uh, covert methods that included law enforcement, the judiciary, um, and documents reveal at least 10,000 <clears throat> individuals were victims of the Zerzitzung. Okay. Um, top secret America. This apparently was a documentary. This is the trailer of a documentary that I guess was on Frontline. The Washington Post in 2010 published an incredible piece, Top Secret America. Now, I was very unhappy to see that the Washington Post, which they had a website for Top Secret America, and the I posted a video on this on uh, Kafka Winston World. The website, it was almost like an interactive website where the, the information that you could get was it was just a a real gold mine of top secret America. You know the um, well, 854,000 public, military, private contractor employees that were handed high, uh, high security clearance. The, let's just review this. And by the way, it's no longer on the Washington Post. But here's a PDF of the article. The government has built a national security and intelligence system so big, so complex, and so hard to manage, no one really knows if it's fulfilling its most important purpose, keeping citizens safe. That was eight years ago. Eight years ago. And fortunately, there, there's at least this PDF uh, this, a lot of these slides were on the Washington Post. It's gone from the Washington Post. Um, but top secret America. This investigation was two years running. Dana Priest and William Arkin did the investigation and wrote the piece for the Post. But here, facts in the article. 2010, by 2010, there were 1,271 governmental organizations and 1,931 private companies engaged in work programs related to the fight against terrorism. National security and intelligence, uh, they had these uh, programs in about 10,000 locations throughout the United States. It was estimated that nearly 1,854,000 people, almost 1.5 times the number of people living in Washington, D.C., were in possession of top secret security authorizations. In and around Washington, there were 33, interesting 33, top secret intelligence building complexes. They were under construction then, or some of them had been built after 2001, 9-11, 2001. Together, they occupied the equivalent of nearly three pentagons, or 22 times the Capitol buildings. It was 17 million square feet of space devoted to top secret 
America. So what is this top secret America? Let's just watch this trailer. You think you know America, but you don't know top secret America. We're all aware that there are three branches of government in the United States. But in response to 9-11, a fourth branch has emerged. It is protected from public scrutiny by extraordinary secrecy. Top secret America. This is a closed community. And since 9-11, it's become even more so. The money spigot was just opened after 9-11, and nobody dared say, I don't think we should be spending that much. It has become so big, and the lines of responsibility are so blurred that even our nation's leaders don't have a handle on it. Where is it? It's being built from coast to coast, hidden within some of America's most familiar cities and neighborhoods. In Colorado, in Nebraska, in Texas, in Florida, in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Top Secret America includes hundreds of federal departments and agencies operating out of 1,300 facilities around this country. They contract the services of nearly 2,000 companies. In all, more people than live in our nation's capital have top secret security clearance. It's again the size, the, the lack of transparency, and the cost. And if we don't get it right, uh, the consequences are gigantic. Video that I posted just about an hour ago, Charlotte Esserby, and I have to tell you, just listening to her, I identify with her, um, her emotive tone, and I certainly identified with she saying and being very upset with her fellow Americans that showed she and her no support personally, she and her um, son, no support, but that they didn't care that Maine was being taken over by essentially what is East German Stasi in Maine. Okay. It is very upsetting. You know, when you come across articles like these, ah, so, um, have we been validated when we have been telling, trying to tell our fellow Americans, the smart meter, it's not going to save you money. It's going to destroy your health. But it also allows them to track everything that you're doing. So you come across articles like this, which was posted just a few days ago, dementia patients to be tracked by smart meters so that doctors can monitor any sudden changes that indicate illness, falls, or mental decline. Here, this article reveals smart meters can be used for surveillance. Now, this is happening in uh, the UK, but will people be able to read this and then think a little bit beyond their, their emotional response? Oh, thank God, because we have so many de dementia patients now in the UK. Uh, dementia is um, exploding, as it is here in the United States. But will they be able, they'll be happy that dementia patients will be watched by a smart meter. And they won't carry that over. They won't think beyond that. They won't think, wait a second, if you can, if you can with a smart meter, surveil dementia patients, I've got a smart meter. That means you can actually track me. Probably not. But we all know smart meters, <laughs> they're not about saving you money. It is about 
uh, tracking your behavior in your home. And it's also, well, with that real-time data, they can determine how much electricity you use, how much water you're going to be using, and if you use too much because, oh, very shortly, we're all going to be rationed in terms of how much electricity we can use. You know, those heat waves and that air conditioning that causes power outages. You know, it's amazing that Americans, that it's like they're little kids and they'll believe whatever daddy or mommy or government official tells them. So, you know, it's also one of the reasons why we hear now in California that their electricity, sorry, it's going to be turned off because there's wind. There's wind. And, you know, those fires, well, wind, and then they knock down an electricity pole, and then you have tens of thousands home, of homes brought to dust in 24 hours. That's, that's, yeah, so we don't have a lot of people who can who can actually use their brain anymore. So the dementia patients will be tracked according to what they are doing in their home. And very easy to track people who live a, a rather robotic uh, regimented pattern of life. You get up at the same time. You go make your coffee at the same time. You do your laundry on a certain day at a, during a certain time. Um, you watch TV at a certain time. All of that is information, the data that they collect, so that they know your habits, they know your routine, they know when you're in your house, they know when you're outside of your house. Oh boy, so when you also see articles like this, appeals court, police don't need a reason to place Americans on suspicious persons list. Okay, this was posted a couple of days ago. Do we ever hear any outcry about what is taking place? No. Okay, the United States of America, you know, with that constitution that people still think that they actually have, and I think that they would even read this article, read this headline, and still think they have a constitution. Police don't need a reason. Now, you're on a suspicious list. You don't need any reason. Which means we are no longer the United States. We are East Germany with the Stasi. Working there, Zitzertzung, Zerzitzung, psychological warfare on Americans. I will link below to everything. Um, very important that people get that we are no longer the United States. We have been taken over already. But what what then is this Zerzitzung, American Zerzitzung, written by Karen Stewart? Who is Karen Stewart? Karen Stewart was an intelligence analyst with top secret clearance for the NSA for 28 years. This is a woman who is in the know. I want to read a lot of this article. It is long, but this article confirms what targeted individuals have been saying for a very, very long time. And, well, it may even bring you some awareness to things that are happening in your life that you do not understand. So suddenly someone you are related to, someone you know pretty well, or your spouse, begins to have some bad luck, then massive bad luck, then never-ending bad luck. Car is vandalized multiple times, dog is stolen. He or she may inexplicab inexplicably be getting a hard time at work or even getting fired. You try to be a friend, a good family member, a supportive spouse. You tell them it will pass, but it doesn't. You start to wonder if they are oversensitive, overstressed, imagining things, starting to cause their own problems. 
but they have always been logical, grounded, even healed. They start to report to you that they are getting uncalled for rude remarks, rude behavior, even outright abuse, bullying from neighbors, coworkers, complete strangers. Big deal, you think people are rude. We all experience that. Why is your loved one, friend, spouse suddenly so sensitive to this? Why does he or she think it is happening all the time? Surely that is an exaggeration. What is going on with him or her? What has changed? Weeks, months pass. The conversation and circumstances for this person does not seem to change. It may even be worse. It is getting frustrating for you. Others are distancing themselves from this person, making him or her needier. You want to talk about other things, but this person is stuck in a rut. Then they start talking about people seeming to be following them, but always strangers and seemingly various people. But the odd behavior of these strangers is exactly the same. How can that be? Almost choreographed, seemingly play acting for your friend's benefit and saying things that touch on issues and conversations that are private and unique to your friend. Wild coincidence? How often is that possible? Then you remember an old movie, Gaslight, a term for psychologically attacking and manipulating a person for nefarious purposes to believe he or she is going crazy, or at least to make others think that. You do some research and find the book Mobbing, Emotional Abuse in the American Workplace. It is essentially adult bullying and gaslighting by a group. It is so real that Europe and Canada recognize it as a tort. Um, if you don't know tort, tort law, it's uh, like a, a, a civil offense. It's uh, an, ab an abuse you can sue your employer for, but not here in the United States. You dig a little more, you find an older book called Cause Stalking by David Lawson, a private eye in Florida, who discovered networks of gangs of mercenary stalkers. They could be hired to stalk and harass anyone for any purpose. They could be hired to drive someone out of town, punish a spouse for divorcing the other spouse, intimidate local government to pass an ordinance or not pass an ordinance, punish an employee for suing an employer. They were mercenaries. They could not care less about the cause. It was also a power trip. They were part of a big formidable group. They were the bullies of bullies. Um, <laughs> there's my cat wanting to come in. Hold on. So they were the bullies of bullies, but hiding in a large group, they were invincible. A hundred people had their backs, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands in big cities. Even police, fire department employees, hospital employees, heck, who could not use some easy money, especially when police look the other way or even participate. The fix was in. No one would be caught, much less prosecuted. Those who brokered contract stocking jobs became more powerful than any elected official. Like mafia. It is like the mafia. Mafia who ran cities in the shadows. Everyone was on their payroll. Communist East German secret police. Zerzitzung. The program of psychological attack and relentless abuse and trauma was indeed meant to isolate and emotionally destroy the person with the goal to actually drive them to suicide. That's how the uh, Stasi murdered pesky dissidents who were fighting for freedom and 
It is going on here. It is going on here. We are no longer the United States of America. If people could get how unbelievably evil is this country, if people could step out of their closed minds, if they had some awareness of their confirmation bias, if they ha had some awareness of how they were living in this bubble with th th this delusion that we are still the free country, well, then maybe we could get somewhere, but no, they're you say this and you're crazy. You're crazy. Though it's right in our face now. Very in our face. Started 9-11-2001. It has been. It, it, even within the first few weeks after 9-11, you could see where this country was headed with legislation being passed that gutted our constitutional rights. 9-11 happened, then laws that put the Constitution under attack were passed. The federal government told us, you can be free and vulnerable, or less free, but protected. Give us your freedoms, we promise we will give them back. One day, we promise, trust us. So, we gave them our freedom. This was America. Baseball, mom, apple pie. It still rained, right? Didn't it? It's been dead for a very long time. The FBI created fusion centers, at least one in every state and often two. These were created ostensibly so that the federal government could share information with local governments so that clues to another 9-11 might not be missed. As multiple stories indicated, ample warnings for 9-11 were somehow missed. Yes, we missed it. We missed it. We missed it. So we've got to create this top secret America so that we don't miss it. Again, anybody who could believe that the Pentagon missed, oh, sorry, uh, somehow we just missed everything. One plane goes into a building. Another plane goes into a building. Oh, those planes brought to dust the World Trade Centers. There was so much going on that day that was so fantastic like a movie. And then the narrative came from mainstream media reporters. And then our leaders telling the most fantastic lies about what occurred that day. And everyone fell for it. Unbelievable. Yeah, missed. So now we've got to create a police state so we don't miss it again. Unbelievable. The American people. So, so incredibly naive, stupid, dumbed down, lack of care, who the hell knows. But it's astounding that we still have Americans who believe the official story of 9-11. The Department of Homeland Security was created to keep America safe. Who? Who was called in to consult? Ex-KGB official and an East German secret police official. Men who had dedicated their adult lives to the destruction of free societies yeah, what could go wrong? Fusion centers were designed to be private enterprises that host local law enforcement, federal law enforcement, civilian infraguard, and business partners who share critical information. Private enterprises do not have to respond to FOIA 
requests, freedom of information requests. They are immune. But why should that matter? InfraGuard are designated human. Human. They are fusion center proxy stalkers and harassers, trained thugs who harass in the style of Zerzitzung. 24-7 sadistic harassment perpetrated against designated targets to destroy and drive them to suicide. But if they cannot be driven to suicide, then the accompanying, uh, accompanying, accompanying massive slander campaign painting them wrongfully as a pedophile, sexual deviant, traitor, terrorist, or terrorist sympathizer so en enrages people around them that they gladly participate in efforts to set them up to be institutionalized or imprisoned for the crimes they just haven't been caught doing yet. Criteria for being put on the fraud DHS FBI Fusion Center terrorist watch list is less than probable cause. How is that possible? That means no proof, no witnesses, no investigation, and no validated accuser, just an accusation that is essentially a, we, uh, a wink and a nod between those in the good old boys club. Does that suffice to turn someone's life upside down and even destroy it without even publicly accusing them of a crime or even letting them know that they have been accused of something? Is this not contrary to the Sixth Amendment, the right to know what you have been accused of, who accused you, and the right to a speedy trial? Why would anyone set up such a system that obviously is contrary to the Constitution? Okay, this is what we are living. This is what this country has turned into already. And people's lives are being destroyed by what is essentially Stasi Zerzitzung methods. What about the supposed real terrorists that they're supposed to be? You know, the, oh, you got to give up your constitutional rights and your freedom so that you're protected. Uh, those real terrorists. So why, after being told people of a certain ethnicity and religion are our blood enemies, which was the narrative after 9-11, they threaten our very existence. Why were those people precisely the ones enticed to immigrate to our country by the millions right after 9-11? Hello? Nothing makes sense in our country anymore. The cash cow of the American police state, surveillance state, is the average American minding his own business, working, trying to get ahead, there is a never-ending supply of those types to blindside and throw into the meat grinder. Once placed on the list, InfraGuard are alerted to the cover story accusations. Then they get busy viciously slandering the victim as a threat to be feared and nullified by any means possible to everyone they can in his life as well as those in the general area. This could be thousands as they work their way through churches, social clubs, PTAs, lying under color of law. The lies are followed up with threats that the intended victim may not be told about the accusations or this will reveal national secrets. And the neighbors, friends, family, or even spouse could go to prison for doing so. They are put on harassment schedules told how to harass on their shift, given accounts, and paid under the table with tax dollars laundered into untraceable gift cards, services, merchandise, which allows greed to assuage any guilt pangs and make it more convenient for them to tell themselves they are actually patriots, not subversives. The Constitution and Bill of Rights be damned. Fusion centers sell lucrative contracts to partners, 
on these targets who are secretly pronounced terrorists, then secretly stripped of all their constitutional, civil, and human rights, and then secretly classified as bio specimens to be experimented on, used as lab rats to teach torture techniques to technicians and warfighters, and sometimes even killed, using advanced bioweapons, chemical weapons, and even electronic weapons meant for war population control. When these weapons were used in Cuba and China on American diplomats in 2017-2018, it made front page news when used against whistleblowers such as ex-FBI uh, Gerald Sosby and former attorney with the state of California, Jeannie Janine, sorry, Tanaka, it was hushed up. Some targeted individuals even are secretly injected with RFID chips to locate and monitor them like pet dogs, but also experimental medical chips that can time release drugs, cause movement or pain involuntarily to the victim, direct electronic weapons more precisely, or break down muscle, tissue, bone, etc to simulate deterioration caused by disease to better understand the disease process. And even in death, the targeted individual still brings profit, a kill bonus to his or her abusers. The Department of Homeland Security, FBI, Fusion Center, and InfraGuard criminal cabal has one last profit to wring from the horribly abused body of the targeted person using private information garnered under color of law, many life insurance policies, trust funds, and even joint properties that pay the partner upon death are created by his or her tormentos, tormentors to profit from upon his or her death. Loading up on maximum policies allowed per company, this could fill up countless coffers County property tax clerks are often eager to share in such profit and offer their services in hiding such abuses for casual oversight or even serious investigations. One can imagine that such money can and is turning certain towns into murder for hire towns, where this is becoming a cottage industry with almost everyone in the know but the innocent victims. Once he or she is used up, Yet another victim is chosen, and the conveyor belt process begins again, ad infinitum. After all, according to academia and media talking heads, we have an overabundance of world population, so what difference does it make? So what can you do for your spouse, loved one, friend, neighbor? First, listen. Give him or her credence, as you have in the past, or credence you would give anyone else out of respect for their humanity. If this is true, how well would you cope or survive? A main tactic of the enemy trying to kill him or her is isolation. If no one cares, he or she will likely be killed or kill themselves. Stick up for the person, either by a written testimonial or by accompanying him or her to whatever authority they chose to approach. Do not let yourself be bullied by the authorities. Do not be tricked into divulging personal information about him or her authorities. Worry about his or her mental state or do anything the authorities suggest to monitor him or her. The victim does not need monitoring. The authorities are gaslighting you. Their job is to railroad the person in, into an institution or jail for profit. And yes, prison for profit. That's our United States of America. Prison. For profit. For profit prisons. The more people you put in jail, the more profitable it is. And then think about child services. The more children you snatch, the more profit you make. We are a sick, diseased, evil country. And we've got to start facing that. Um, their job is to railroad the person into an institution or jail for profit. Your spouse, relative, friend will need moral and emotional support 
maybe even financial to some degree. Um, cease and desist and protective orders are a good start in pushing back and publicly identifying the bullies. Support the person as credible. Support the person as credible. Find quality and trustworthy doctors and a lawyer of integrity. Um, and uh, it's essential. Hard to find, though. Trustworthy and integrity. Well, <laughs> my cats are enjoying themselves on this rainy day. Uh, the Homeland Security apparatus may try to interfere. You've got to advocate for your loved one so that they are saved. Their life is saved. Educate others as quickly and accurately as possible to the horror going on in this society and the world affecting thousands of victims and growing daily. Your loved one is the canary in the coal mine. In the coal mine. Heed his or her warnings and act decisively. There is little time left waiting for the overabundance of solid proof to a covert elusive crime may simply come too late. Why am I doing this? Because this is happening. It is destroying people's lives. I've heard from subscribers. Their experience matches what I just read. Please share this information. Get it. It's over. We are no longer the United States of America. You think we are? You're living a delusion.